Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. What do you think? Is it tough to be pessimistic on silver at current prices? Or do you think it's tough to be optimistic on silver at current prices? We'll explore here uh, from this portfolio manager's perspective an article here on Market Watch and see what side of the fence you fall on with regards to silver. <laughs> Silver's cheap, not encouraging new supplies, says Sprott's Maria Smirnova. And silver's been a lackluster performer this year. But as investors' appetite for gold improves, silver might share in the yellow metal's prosperity. And as most of you know, typically silver does follow gold to some level um, when there's price movements. However, that is something to be considered, and we'll explore that a little bit further down the road, why that may not always be the case, and from here on out, on out, it may not be the case either. Hence, while we have such a wide silver-to-gold ratio, it's difficult to be pessimistic about silver at these levels with prices that don't provide an incentive to boost supply, says Maria Smirnova, Senior Portfolio Manager at Toronto-based Sprott Asset Management. Silver futures settled at... $14.86 an ounce on Thursday, down more than 4% in 2019 after last year's more than 9% loss. In contrast, gold futures at $12.93.30 an ounce were up 1% this year, on track to recoup half their losses of just over 2% in 2018. We expect silver to outperform gold, says Smirnova. Silver has lacked retail investment demand, so a sustained rally in gold will lead to the speculators coming and buying silver. Total physical demand for silver rose 4% last year to a three-year high of 1.03 billion ounces, according to the Silver Institute's World Silver Survey, compiled by team at financial data analytics provider uh, Refinitiv. The report, released on Thursday, also showed that global industrial demand uh, fell 1% last year to 578.6 million ounces. All told, silver's physical market posted a minor deficit of 29.2 mi million ounces in 2018, which is considered to be close to balanced. Smirnova expects industrial demand to remain stable despite slower economic growth. A recent forecast from the IMF revealed expectations for a global economic expansion of 3.3% uh, this year, down from an estimated 3.5% in January. Silver does not represent large components of end products, Mirnova explains, pointing out that electronics, cars, and medicines don't use a lot of the metal per unit, so an economic slowdown probably won't have, have a big impact on it. Its use in solar applications is also insulated from economic growth because that market is more driven by government incentives and the need for renewable energy. <clears throat> Instead, it's return to retail investment demand that will be driving force behind an increase in silver price, Mirnova predicts. And I disagree with that, actually, um, because... You know, these units, there's not a lot in electronics and cars, but it's very widely dispersed between those products. And I think that could lower demand uh, for silver, uh, which means that uh, uh, its price may not move upwards. And I will also say that there is uh, other impact for solar. It's not just uh, government incentives, I think, that are effect, because if someone can't afford solar panels, whether or not there's incentives or not from the government, in the form of a tax rebate, you know, they're not going to spend the money uh, for it. Now, states like California that are saved by the year 2020, some home, new homes over a certain square footage and amount uh, will be required to have solar panels put on them. Um, I think that's uh, something that is a slightly different situation, but that's for one state and doesn't apply to all homes. But regardless, there's a lot of silver used in solar, about 20 grams uh, per panel. And uh, so with the use of electronics and with um, silver being used more widely in other applications and technology and cars and medicines and the like, um, I think that an economic slowdown will have a larger impact than what the author says here. That's just my feeling on it. 
The World Silver Survey found that global investment in silver bars and coins grew 20% last year, with bar demand alone up 53%. The study also revealed a third consecutive annual decline in global production of the metal. It fell 2% in 2018 to 855.7 million ounces. Silver is cheap at 15 bucks an ounce, as it is not an encouraging new supply, says Smirnova. Primary mines are not generating a lot of cash at these levels or are losing money. And, you know, they're not producing as much. Silver is being produced as a byproduct of other metals. And the thing about it is, too, what the author fails to tell us in this study or in this analysis is that because silver is a byproduct of other metals, that means that if there's less demand for copper, nickel, and other metals from which silver is a byproduct in mining, that means that the demand's going to go lower and it won't be used as much for those items. And that could have a negative effect on the price. Conversely, because of the, depending on the ratio of use con compared to those other metals, it could actually increase the price. So that could really work both ways. But it's something that should be considered as a factor, but probably would need further study. Some analysts urge caution. Adam Koss, president of Libertas Wealth Management Group, believes that silver is a wait-and-see game right now. However, he has recently detected momentum for gold waning in favor of silver. Given that, he wouldn't be surprised to see a changing of the guard at some point in 2019, putting silver in the lead. However, that he wanted to see prices break above $16 before risking any serious capital. <clears throat> and, I could, and it does make sense to kind of wait and see. And I think probably he understands, hence the caution, is that silver really is a duality metal, um, more so now than ever before. Its use is so diverse in other industries and its demand in those areas far greater than those in the, in the quote, investment sector, even though it's been picking up in the investment sector um, with the demand in that area, which is actually good news, actually, I think. Investors seeking exposure to physical silver can consider Sprott Physical Silver Trust, PSLCV, which Smirnoff manages. So, you know, you can kind of see there's the, <clears throat> the tie-in to, yes, they want you to buy silver, and they want you to buy their particular brand of silver. Um, <clears throat> and those interested in silver stocks might want to look at the nine-point silver equities class funds. And uh, so there's that. Uh, version or the you know that perspective for sure for silver so you can see there's somewhat of an agenda there but again i don't i take the analysis seriously uh, but you have to kind of take a look at the source and consider both sides of, this, of the scenario because really the metals could move in tandem or and but i do think that silver is more volatile so it has definitely a lot more upside potential i think at this point than downside potential um for sure it's sitting at 15 bucks Right now, pretty solid, and gold is under thirteen hundred dollars. So it's um it's definitely a bargain, and uh, I believe that um <clears throat> you know it has room to move upwards, probably more so. And I think that its moves uh, north will probably could probably potentially be greater. But I think it's probably going to take a move in gold price to really trigger that uh, spike in silver. The other two metals are sort of independent, I believe from where silver is. But it is an interesting metal to see how it's been working out um, and how the movements in the price have kind of fluctuated over the years um, and how silver has really been tepid in response. And um, I think a lot of that has to do with just the sentiment, people feeling soured, and really even to some extent gold too. But cryptocurrencies, I think, um, has provided another avenue that a lot of silver buyers have kind of abandoned and moved into into crypto even more so than gold buyers i think there is enough of a difference between those metals we want to provide that hence why gold is considered more of a stable asset silver is used in the in the biomedical technology fields it was sort of a play it was a more of a it's slightly more of a you know with that with that role as a commodity is, is that kind of scenario has led it to really be more volatile, but also with not much movement, movement as of late. 
and has been really disappointing a lot of people. But we'll see how it all plays out. Um, I do believe uh, that there is more upside potential to silver than downside, but it could continue to go down um, just as quickly and just as easily as it is going up. And a lot of it depends on all the factors we talk about on this channel. But post your thoughts below. Do you think silver has more upside potential than downside potential? Or do you think it has a lot more room uh, to move either, in either direction? And do you think gold will be the catalyst as I do for its movement? Post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching. And encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.